today we're making St. Louis ribs. Guys, we are gonna take a full set of spares, cut them down into St. Louis ribs. We're gonna inject those, then we're gonna season them up, get them on the ugly drum smoker. And today it's showing you how to make fantastic, tender, moist spare ribs on the ugly drum smoker. So stick around and see exactly how I do that. This is Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine and I am Chef Johnny, appreciate you stopping by. Now, we are cooking up some St. Louis ribs today. I have a full rack of spare ribs. I'm gonna show you how to cut those down into St. Louis's. We're gonna inject them. I got some fantastic injection and some wonderful rubs. So come in close, let's see how we do this and see how my rubs and my injections work and what I use on these to get that great taste from them. Here we go. Nice big rack of spare ribs. You can see it's the, it's the full spare. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna cut these down to a St. Louis cut. So we're gonna kinda take this portion right here out of them. First thing I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take off this breastbone right here. So I come in here, get in the cartilage area, and it's just straight down. That's off. You want something to munch on? Throw that on the pit. Makes a good little Scooby snack whenever you're, whenever you're, uh, these will get done before those do. And you can munch on those. But if you're wanting to do a, a St. Louis, well, see, I'm gonna come in here and just clean this nasty stuff off the end. But uh, you kind of find your top bone. Your longest bone's about right here. So that's about the distance we're looking for, is right there. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut right along the top of that bone and try to make a straight cut all the way down. Have a nice sharp knife. This is just a six inch Wustoff uh, chef's knife. It's a great little knife. I'm gonna throw that on there and probably cook those at the same time. These are just for the family, so we'll eat all that. Uh, now you just come in here and kind of decide where you wanna square off at, but I don't always cut off that end bone and why I feel like it protects the bones inside of it, same way with this end, but um, you get a little flap of meat here. Turn around maybe so y'all can see a little better. And that's where the diaphragm was. So you can just come in here and take it and slice that off. Try not to get down into your rib bone. Just go right above it. That's looking pretty right there. Now take off this membrane. We want to get the membrane off because we want to get um, smoke and seasoning to this side of those ribs. You can see we missed a little bit here. I can, I can clean that up. And if this is a, a cook off, my ribs are gonna, these are a little crooked, but kind of right here. I'll usually cook three racks, maybe four racks for a cook off, depending on what pit I have. And I, like I said, I usually don't cut these off just cause I feel like it protects what's inside of it. But you can come in here, slide your knife just under that membrane and then turn it up with a, not with the blade side, but your backside, the spine, right of your knife. This is kind of tough to get hold of. It's kind of slippery. There's a trick to doing that. Get you a paper towel, reach in here, grab it, work your uh, membrane off up to the top. Then you just grab it and it should come off in one piece. That one had some cuts in it, you can see, and that's why it didn't come off in one piece, but try to get it off all the way if you can. It doesn't always happen that way and it's not the end of the world. Just come in here and work that membrane off because if this is a contest rib, you don't want to feed that to the judges, I promise you. And even for the, the family, you want to get that, uh, that, you know, the best experience you can for your family on the ribs you're making. And on this backside, all you want to do is, is just kind of clean up. If you got any big hunks of fat, go ahead and get that off. You need to kind of do it like you do a brisket. Really, these aren't going to be um, our ribs that we're going to serve to the judges, but if you want to come get a little bit of fat off, Kind of put your hand underneath it and you can lift it up and get some of that big fat off. Flip these back over. Let's look at this top side. This little piece of meat here is going to slough off. Sometimes I cut it off, sometimes I don't. It's just a little piece of meat sitting up on top of some fat. But we're going to take that off today and just clean this area up a little bit. You gotta be careful not, or you'll get down into the meat here and you don't wanna do that. But remember, these first two ribs, they're not gonna be box ribs anyways if this is a cook off. But that's not bad. They're a little bit narrow on this end. I could probably come in and 
take a little bit more off the top. If this was a, a contest rib and I wanted them to be all the same length, I would probably just take a little bit more off here. Not gonna worry about that. These are for the family. They'll cook up just fine. Another thing to look for if these are a cook-off set of ribs is try to get the thickest ribs you can. Nice thick ribs always cook up well. But that's what we're gonna do there. Now we're gonna mix up our injection. Today for our injection, I'm gonna use some uh, Boss Hog. Now this is from LC Barbecue. It's a very good injection. Y'all see I got a Cosmo shaker. I love Cosmos also. They have a very good pork injection, but this one's already opening. Might as well use the one that's open, right? So 12 ounces of water, and I'm gonna take three tablespoons of my Boss Hog, and I'm gonna drop it in here. And I tell you what, this Boss Hog is, it has got a lot of flavor in it. Just get your uh, your favorite one, but if you want this one, I tell you what, Philip Breeden designed this. He was number one in the uh, IBCA this year, barbecue cook-off team, and uh, this is the one he makes. So I'll tell you, it's pretty good stuff. And uh, if you go to him on Facebook, type in CJ10 when you order anything off of him, his rubs or his injections, and he'll give you a 10% uh, discount for going through this uh, website. I don't get anything for it, but he does help out my viewers. So go in there, type in CJ10, and you can uh, get you a little 10% discount when you order uh, the LC barbecue injections or rubs. Now, we're gonna take our injector and start working on injecting these different ways. Some people will just do like three across. You can do one from each side. A lot of people do it different ways. I'm gonna use this injector. I'll put a link down below where y'all can see one like this to find if you want them. Or you could just use this one. I've made many a rib with these. I also have a chops injector that I've used on pork butts and stuff like that, that you pump it up and it works great. But for things like this, one of these two, and not too big of a diameter needle. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna find my bones, right? Here's my first bone. And you can come through here, you can fill them. And I'm gonna come in between my bones, right? And I'm gonna kinda inject as I come out. So, in between the bones again, find the next bone. Inject as I'm coming out, maybe one, maybe two cc's. Then I cover the middle, and then I go down here on the end, right, all the way out. Find my next set of bones. We're going into meat. Well, we're just pumping these ribs up full of flavor, full of moisture. Now, if you were in a cook-off, you might want to go to Cosmos and get some moisture magic and go with that. Uh, for here at the house, I just don't do those... I don't use moisture magic at the house. Save that for the comps. And some of y'all know, I don't cook off a whole lot anymore. I still do a little bit, depending on this COVID gets over. I'm going to be doing a few cook-offs this year. We're going to be taking some Cosmos to the cook-offs and a little LC barbecue. And just once it's empty, just take it and put it back up here. Fill it back up. That's why I like this one over that little one. It just works a lot faster, and if you're doing a few racks of ribs, you can get it done a whole lot faster. Let me finish getting these done, and uh, then I'll get back with you, and I'll show you the next step. We have got those pumped up and full of moisture, full of flavor. So what I'm going to do is just take a paper towel, and I'm going to pat these dry. All right? We want to get all the moisture we can off the top. It's going to help our uh, rub stick. Now, on spare ribs, I do not always... Uh, I don't always use a binder. A lot of people use binders. I don't always do that, but today I think we are. And when I use a binder on my pork, I use uh, mustard. Those are dry. Let me get my hands cleaned off, get my gloves back on, and we'll get to rubbing these down. Just got regular old French's yellow mustard. That's what I like to use. But I'm going to go with the uh, backside first. And it doesn't take a whole lot. Right about there will work. Just a thin coat. And you could check your bones along here. If you have any 
breaks or little chips of bone or something, great time to get those off. But that's enough right there. Does not take much at all on ribs. Because like I said, ribs are already, they're kind of moist and they're kind of sticky. Got a little piece hanging there. I'm just going to take that off. Good sharp knife always helps. And I'm going to start off with some uh, Dirty Bird from Cosmos. And let's go back to the back first because, right, they're going to see our tops. So that's why we always leave our top last. So I'm going to come in here with some Dirty Bird. Great, great flavor right here. And then on top of my Dirty Bird, I'm going to come back with some uh, Honey Chipotle Killer Bee. Gonna put a great flavor on these ribs. When I pick these up, I'm just gonna kind of touch the ends and try to pick up some of that uh, rub that's falling off the edges, right? Just so we got some rub. See here, none up on top. So you always wanna have a little rub on those. Flip these over. I'm gonna go Dirty Bird first. These aren't a huge piece of meat, so it doesn't take just a large amount to uh, get these going right, right? A lot of flavor. And I tell you what, these Cosmo rubs are packed full of flavor, and they are gonna give these ribs some beautiful, beautiful color. There is our Killer Bee Chipotle. Get my tops good. Those are ready to go. I'm gonna put them back in my uh, container, just a disposable tray. Set them in the refrigerator. I'm gonna go out and check the pit, let these sweat out a little bit. Once they've sweated out good, we'll show you how to get them on that ugly drum smoker. Drum smoker's up to 275. These uh, spare ribs are now St. Louis ribs. Have, uh, they've juiced out a lot, got a lot of nice moisture on them. They're looking pretty. Let's get them on this pit. You can see those right there. Look at that. They are pretty. Got a nice color on them. Put them right there. Like I told you, this is for the family. We're cooking these for us. And that Scooby snack for later. I've got some fantastic lump charcoal on here from Fogo. I like cooking it. It burns clean. And I've got some uh, mesquite wood on top of that. So we're gonna have some nice smoke on these, close them up. At 275, folks, this is gonna be about a three and a half hour cook. We're gonna go two hours with smoke. We're gonna wrap them for about an hour, and then we're gonna take about a half an hour to set that bark again, get our sauce on, and get them looking pretty. We are right at three hours, about two hours and 50 minutes in. Check these at two hours, and they just did not have enough color on them. Uh, they were starting to pull back a little bit off the bone. I said, you know what, I'm going to let them stay. Because most of y'all, if y'all watch me, I wrap to color. But we're going to pull them off now. If they're the right color, we're going to check on wrapping those up and finishing this cookup. So let's get them off this UDS. This color is looking a lot better. I'm going to take these and, boy, I tell you what, they look like they're about ready to look at them. And I tell you what, look at that, folks. A rib is ready when it does that. When you pick it up in the middle, it points at the ground, it's ready. These ribs are not gonna get wrapped. Let's put them over here. We're gonna sauce these babies, put them back on, give them about 15, 20 minutes to set the sauce, and then we're gonna give them a try. This color on these is not bad at all. They're a little bit, I mean, this, this is set. I would like to wrap these and uh, soften this top up a little bit, put them face down. But if I do, they're gonna be much, much overcooked. I am gonna do one thing though. I am gonna put some butter on them just to soften this uh, up a little bit, this bark. So just some squeezed butter. Not gonna go to the degree of all the wrap we normally do, guys. So this is, hey, let me tell you what, every cook is different. That's a, the great, I mean, it's the wonderful thing and the frustrating thing about uh, doing barbecue. 
And that is, every cook's different. Every cook is different. Now, got some butter on here. That's going to help soften that up some. It's going to add a little bit of richness to this uh, set of ribs. But what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to come back and I had some rib glaze. I had some different things I was going to do. I'm going to come up with some Killer Bee. And just give me a light sprinkle of Killer Bee on it. There we go. That's nice. And then I'm going to come in with some uh, Cherry Habanero from Cosmos. Well, those ribs are hot. This sauce is warm. Uh, I didn't heat the sauce up, but I did. Uh, I let it sit out, so it's at room temperature. Bring it just out of the refrigerator, and it's going to be cold. But it's going to give us some uh, pretty color on these ribs. Don't want to rub all my rub off. Of course, comp wouldn't be brushing them right. We would not want to brush that off. I am going to come back with a little bit of honey, though. This is gonna give a nice shine and sweetness to these ribs. But they're gonna forego the brown sugar and the, and the wrapping up because they're good. I'm just gonna take a, uh, I'm just gonna take my tongs and sit them back on there. And I'm gonna let them sit there until this sauce candies up. I'm thinking 15, maybe 20 minutes. And these ribs are gonna be done in three hours and 15, 20 minutes maybe which is real fast for some ribs, but that honey's gonna give them some nice sheen. They're gonna look pretty. Let's come back with a little bit of our, uh, our Dirty Bird on top of that. Add a little more color. They still were a little bit light, but there we go, little Dirty Bird. They're gonna have to be packed with a lot of flavor. Let's get our tongs and get them back on the pit. I'm gonna take these ribs. Scoop them up. Look at them. They're done. 15 to 20 minutes to set that. I'm going to take off our rib tips, right? That little breast bone. Let those, uh, I am going to wrap those. They'll take a little bit longer. Lids back on. These ribs are looking pretty. I'm going to take them off. Put them up on our cutting board. Move my rib tips to the middle of the pit. Let them keep cooking. We're going to try these ribs. See, let them cool a little bit. Then we're going to try these ribs. These ribs have been off for about 15 minutes. They're looking really pretty, cooled off enough that we can slice them. And if you look, you can see all these little humps. Those humps are from where we kind of squished them together when they cook. Remember, they're going to look how they cook. Scrunch them up. They're going to puff them up. They're going to hold water better, hold moisture. But I'm going to come in here and you just kind of, kind of find your bone, right? And then bring your knife in and you're just going to slice right through it. We're going to slice out one of these middle ribs. Let y'all look at it. Let's just take a look here. Got a nice smoke green. There's moisture in these ribs. They're going to taste really, really good. That LC barbecue, that boss hog, has packed some flavor and some moisture in them. Plus, these rubs we got from Cosmo, they're going to work great. I'm just going to bring this rib up. I'm going to slice right there. Here's our next one right through that hump, right? These ribs are pretty. Look here. You look at that. See how it tastes for y'all. But I tell you, I bet you it tastes pretty tremendous. Right there. Clean bite through. Didn't pull the meat off the bone. That's a very good cooked rib right there. And it does have plenty of flavor, plenty of moisture. Dirty Bird. Always, always a good rub to use, and I'm really, really liking this uh, Chipotle Honey Killer Bee. It's a tremendous rub. Also gives you just a little bit of spice. Of course, we put some of that habanero, uh, the cherry habanero on it too with a little spice with it. 
but by no means would I call this a hot rib. But I tell you what, it's a tasty rib and it is a colorful rib. Hope you enjoyed, hope you give it a try. And if you do give this recipe a try, then come back and tell me how your next batch of ribs turned out. And remember folks, every cook is different. Today, I did not have to wrap these. If I would have, we could have taken them to falling off the bone. Didn't want them quite there, all right? I wanted to back off from falling off the bone. I think I did that very well. Left a good bite, tender, and folks, it is an excellent rib. So thanks for stopping by Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. Always do appreciate it. Hey, remember to check out my uh, apron. I put a link down below for them. Made in the USA, wax canvas and leather. But uh, nice people over there in North Carolina. So check them out. Tell your friends and family about us. Share us on your social media. And we're going to see you down the road on Texas-style barbecue and cuisine. So long, everybody. Mm -hmm.